Okay, so here's what we're doing. So we got our 25 kilogram block on the, on the ramp, 30 kilogram block hanging. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the total system of both blocks, okay, which I have outlined here in red. Everybody good with that? Okay, so when you make a free body diagram, what you need to focus on is what are called external forces. So from the video, can somebody tell me what, it, what do we mean when we talk about external forces? What makes them external? What do you got? They're outside the system? Okay. Sort of. So remember, every force has two objects associated with it, right? The object doing the pushing and the object being pushed, right? So when we call it an external force, which one of those objects is outside the system? The object being pushed or the object doing the pushing? The one doing the pushing, right? Okay? So I want to identify any forces, any pushes or pulls that are exerted by an object other than the string or the two masses. Cool? So, somebody give me a force that is an external force in this example. Sure, we got that force. Force of gravity. Can we be a little more specific? Uh, okay, so you're talking about the force of gravity on this, right? Yeah. So that's why I said that. There are two forces of gravity, right? All right, somebody justify to me, prove to me that those are external forces. Where does the force of gravity come from? From the Earth, right? It's the Earth's force of gravity. The Earth is outside of our system, right? Okay? So, yes, I agree. We want to find the force of gravity. So the force of gravity on this dude is 30 times 9.8. That gives you 294 newtons. That's an N. Deal with it. Huh? That's okay. All right, everybody good up to there? All right, now this guy has a force of gravity, like Dustin said, of 25 times 9.8, but that's not actually what I'm going to put into the drawing. How come? Because that's not the force like, actually, like, because, uh, all right, so I suppose it can be broken down into two different forces, so the force of uh, gravity uh, parallel and the force of gravity uh, perpendicular, right? Good, yeah, this block is on an inclined plane, right? So anytime you're dealing with a thing on an inclined plane, your steps should be find a force of gravity, then find the two components, right? Just like you did on the target check yesterday. Cool? So that's what I'm going to do here. So it turns out that here we've got an FG parallel of, where did I put my sheet? So this FG parallel ends up being negative. Oh, I'm not going to put the negative in. We'll worry about the negatives in a minute. So it's 157.5 newtons. Good. All right, and then there's also a perpendicular component, which is uh, 187.7. So those are my, those two forces combined are my gravity, right? Is everybody good up for that? All right, what, give me another external force. What's another force affecting the system that comes from outside? Sure. Uh, the normal force on it. So. Good, the normal force on this guy, right? It's got to be big enough to cancel out force this, perpendicular. this perpendicular dude, right? So these guys always cancel, right? Just like on your target check yesterday, right? So 187.7. Good. All right, anything else? There's actually one other external force. Oh, I, real quick, before we get to that, let's verify that this is external. Where does the normal force come from? The surface. The surface, the ramp, right? And that wasn't part of our original system. OK? And why? Is one of the force? Friction, right? So where does the friction exist between what two objects? It's like the, the surface of the ramp and the 25. Good. So the friction is coming from the ramp on the 25 kilogram thing, right? So that is a, and sorry, external force. Good? All right, so we've got to figure out which way the system is going to go so that we can figure out which way friction goes, right? In other words, in what direction is our attempted motion? So usually the easiest way to answer that is to ask yourself, what would happen if there was no friction? So which way would the system go if there was no friction? It would go this way, right? Do you guys see why? Sorry, I didn't even, I wasn't even. So, can you, do you want to try to explain why? Or? It's just that I wrote the, like, 24 is 30, so like everything, I'm sorry. 
Gotcha. OK, so you get your numbers a little mixed up. All right, so the reason it's going to move that way is because the force pulling it in that direction is bigger than the force resisting that direction, right? So it's going to move this way, right? If there's no friction. But there's friction. So we've got to find out what, how friction affects us, right? So at this point, I would take a second and find your FFS max and your FFK. You know your coefficients of friction, and you know your normal force, right? Follow? So we can find those two forces, right? So your maximum friction and static friction ends up being 75.1 newtons, and your kinetic ends up being 46.9 newtons. Have I lost anybody? OK, so. First of all, we said if there wasn't friction, that it would move this way, right? What's static friction going to try to do? Sure, AJ? Prevent that motion. It's going to try to prevent that motion, right? So in order to prevent that motion, it would need to make the net force what? If you're making your object not move, what does your net force have to be, guys? Zero, right? So look, we got almost 300 newtons pulling it this way and only about 150 pulling it back. So to make my net force zero, I'm going to need about another 150 this way, right? Just rounding? Okay. How much force do I have available? Not enough. Not enough. I've only got 75, right? So we're kind of SLL. The thing is going to move. So to finish my drawing, what do I put in? Force of friction kinetic. Kinetic friction. Follow? because there was not enough force to prevent the motion. So put in your kinetic friction. It's going to be 46.9. Now, next issue. I haven't put any negatives in. All right, so remember, because our system is not just running along our usual x or y axes, we need to decide, need to decide on our own sign convention. So our system can either go, well, it turns out it's going uh, this way, right? But it could just as easily have gone this way, right? OK, so the two possibilities are the system can go this way or this way. And we've decided that ours is going to go this way, right? Mm -hmm. So which way do you want to call positive? That way. Uh, this way. The way it goes, right? If you choose the other way, that's cool. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent, all right? And then I'm going to make this negative. Cool? All right, so now my net force is going to be the result of those three forces, right? The three that are highlighted right now. Because these two guys are going to cancel out, right? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Because these guys are going to cancel out. Cool? All right, so here we go. The net force on the system for us is going to be positive 294 minus 157.5 minus 46.9. And so the net force on the system ends up being positive something d something point something something. 89.6 newtons. Good. Because those are the forces that are going to contribute to the motion of the whole thing, the whole system. Follow? All right, so now what can we do? Acceleration. Yeah, once you've got your net force, find your acceleration. Acceleration is net force over mass. So our net force is 89.6 newtons. What do we use for the mass, you guys? Total mass of both blocks. Good, very good. Yeah, the total mass, right? Because the whole system is moving, right? And the whole system has a mass of 55 kilograms. So there's our acceleration. To me, getting to that point is the hard part. Yes, sir. With all of this, can't you just do one diagram? Not three? What do you need to do for you? Uh, because we're not done yet. <coughs> In order to find the tension, we need to make another free body diagram. So, so you don't need three, though. You can just do it two or 
Uh, yes. Yeah, true. Yes. The third one is to check your answer. All right. So is everybody good up to here? How we got the acceleration? All right. Why didn't I worry about the tension here? Why didn't I worry about the force of the rope? Somebody said it. Uh, partly because it's weightless, but there's a bigger reason. Thought somebody said it. What kind of forces did I draw in my free body diagram? Oh, external. external, right? My system right now is the two masses and the rope. And the tension is the force from the? External. What's tension, you guys? What's the definition of tension? Force from a? Like a rope or a chain or something, right? Isn't that what tension is when you have a rope pulling something? So I don't care about the rope pulling because it's inside my system, right? The system includes the two masses and the rope connecting them. So that's an internal force. Does that make sense, you guys? Did I give you guys the running out of gas example yesterday? About internal versus external? So if you're driving home from school today and you run out of gas, and you're like, oh, crap, I ran out of gas. I got to push. And you sit in the car and push on the steering wheel, is that going to make the car go? No, because it's an internal force, right? What's going to happen is you're going to push the steering wheel forward. The reaction is the steering wheel pushes you back into the seat. Now you're pushing the seat backwards, canceling out the force you put on the steering wheel. And the seat's going to push you forward, and you don't move either. It's an internal force, right? The only way for you to get the car to move would be for you to step outside of the car. So you can push on the ground. The ground pushes you. You push the car. Now the car moves. OK? This tension force is an internal force. It's just like sitting inside your car and pushing. OK? Question, Nathan? I was going to say, what if you're one of the forces you and your car on the car? What if it's like not enough to like, overcome the force itself? The car doesn't have an intrinsic force itself. It has mass, and there's friction trying to prevent its motion. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, so the goal is you want your force to be bigger than the friction resisting the motion. Okay, so are we good? All right, so we've got our acceleration. Now, to find the tension, what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of the individual objects in our system. So, which of the two objects is going to be the easiest to analyze to find our tension? The 30, right? Okay, so let's do that. All right, so here's the 30 kilogram mass. All right, what are the things we know about it? Well, we know gravity is pulling it down with a force of 30 times 9.8, so 294. But now, gravity pulls down, right? So that's negative, right? Good guys in back volume a little bit. Volume is coach, please. All right, everybody good with this? All right, I also know the acceleration, don't I? Didn't we just find the acceleration? Yeah. What is it? 1.63. Acceleration is 1.63 meters per second squared. Now here's where you got to be careful. When we calculated it the first time, we got positive, right? Because our sign convention said this way is positive. But within this frame of reference, if you're looking at just the hanging mass, point for me. What direction is that hanging mass going to accelerate? Down, right? And therefore, that acceleration is actually negative, right? It's still 1.63, but in terms of up and down, down is negative, so that's a negative acceleration. Cool? So, you know the acceleration. What should your next step be? Calculate the net force. So 30 times 1.63 gives you a number that I don't remember off the top of my head, but I've written down on this piece of paper. It gives you 89, or 48.9. Negative style. Just by doing mass times acceleration. So if it's going that way, it would be positive. Say that again? Like if it's going that way. Ah, uh, correct. Yep, yeah. So if the system, instead of moving this way, if the system had gone this way, then you're right. That would be accelerating up, which would be positive. Very good question. All right, everybody good? <coughs> All right, so now we can find our tension force, right? So, uh, just make a new page. So, net force is force of gravity plus force of tension. So, our net force is negative 48.9. Our force of gravity is negative 294 
plus tension. How do you solve that? Uh, add the 294. Add the 294, right? And you get a tension force of 245.1 newtons. It is just coincidence that that's the weight of one of the blocks. Cool? All right, so technically we are done now. Like we've answered both questions, right? We found the acceleration and the tension. So you're right, we could just do two diagrams. I like the third one, though, because it's a good check. So before I do the third one, are there any problems on what we did here? Are we good? Yeah, please. Wasn't the force of, was, so is the force of gravity the same for the 20? Say that again? Like for the, for the 20 kilograms, like the one The other one? Yes, yeah, is the force of gravity the same? Is it still 294, you mean? Yeah. No. So your force of gravity would be, it's 25 times 9.8, but then you've got to find those components. So then that make the net force different? Yep, because it's a different mass. Okay. So then will that make the tension? Weirdly, no. <coughs> and I'll show you. Let me, let's do the example and you'll see what happens. Uh, All right, so is everybody okay with what I've got so far? All right, we are almost done. This last part will be quick. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is let's look at the thing on the ramp. So the thing on the ramp had a mass of 25 kilograms, right? So there's a FG perpendicular and a normal force that we don't care about because those cancel out, right? There's an FG parallel, which we found was negative 157.5. You good up to there, Caleb? Everybody good up to there? OK. Uh, we discovered there was friction, force of friction kinetic. And that was negative 46.9 newtons, right? And there's tension. We just discovered our tension force, right? Does everybody understand why the tension is pulling the cart up? Is that it? I think that's it, isn't it? Okay, so last step. Let's see if this gives us the right acceleration. That force is tension plus gravity parallel plus kinetic friction, 245.1, plus negative 157.5, plus negative 46.9. And the net force here for this other box ends up being 40.7 newtons. So you're right, it is a different net force. But it's also a different mass. Good. <coughs> So watch what happens. So acceleration is net force over mass. So our net force is 40.7 newtons. The mass that that net force is moving is 25 kilograms. Divide this out and you get 1.63, oh, no you don't. You get 1.63 meters per second squared. So why am I happy with that answer? Why do I put this on my face? Because it checks out. That's the same acceleration that the, other, the two other free body diagrams I had. Make sense? So I know what you're saying. It's weird. It seems like it shouldn't work out, but it, it does. So kind of a, a one way you can think of it is this. Oh, wrong way. So if you look at the original drawing, the original drawing sort of has 294 newtons making it move, right? Some of that 294 newtons goes into moving the 30 kilograms, and the rest goes into the tension in the rope. Oh, okay. That tension in the rope then pulls this thing forward with enough force to make this thing move at the same acceleration as that. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah, it's it's kind of like the, the 30 kilogram box almost like pulling the rope. A hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, the rope. <coughs> cool. Make sense, you guys? That is as hard as they get. So if you can do that, you're gold. Good? Yes. Not at all. Why do you know like the rope? Why do you know like the like rope was like going like like that, like in the other direction, like going down? As opposed to going the other way? Because before I found my friction, I had this. The gravity from this dude is pulling with almost 300 newtons. 
and the gravity from this dude is only pulling with 150. So which one's going to win? The 300. So it's going to go that way. Cool. But it won't always go that way. It depends on your masses, right? Like if I take if I take this off, then it goes that way, just like in our example, right? Okay. So what that's telling us is that this force of gravity is bigger than the parallel component of gravity going this way. But if I embiggen this force of gravity, then it goes the other way. Okay. So it sort of depends, or not sort of, it totally depends on these two numbers and which one's bigger. So say like the other one's bigger, like the accelerator and the last one. Uh huh. Yep, and then our friction would have gone up the hill instead of down the hill. Okay. But other than that, the process is the same. Sophia? Wow. So the two individuals that are riding the zero is the force of time and negative is the one and plus one. Weirdly, in this one, from their, each of their, so let me say this. From our original drawing, which is now getting terribly cluttered, let me do this. So tension pulls this guy this way, right? And it pulls this guy this way, right? So from our original sign convention, I agree that this one would be positive and this one would be negative. Okay? But that's within the system. And we don't really care about this, the tension within the system because they're internal forces. Okay? Looking at the objects individually, if you look at the hanging mass, point for me. What direction does the tension act? Up. Positive, right? And within the frame of reference of the ramp, the tension's pulling up, which is also positive. But that's just because the, the, the pulley, which the pulley, sort of causes the rope to change the direction that it's pulling in. Well, more important is that they're equal. I wouldn't so much worry about equal and opposite when you've got a pulley. Follow? All right. Good, you guys? That took longer than I hoped it would, but are we good? OK, so the last thing I'm going to do is pass back target checks. If you got 10 or better, let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, I'm going to assume you're good. Uh, if you got less than 10 out of 12, I'll probably grab you and have a quick convo with you, OK? Um, we only have about 15 minutes. So if I don't get to you today, make sure that we talk sometime in the next couple days, OK? Like, find me before after school, all right? OK, things seem to take a little bit longer in this hour, which is OK. All right, so target checks. Here you go. Mr. Hacker, yeah. Water. Yeah, totally. Destin, um, so I tried to write your comments here. Um, on this one, you jumped straight to kinetic friction and didn't use your static friction. And it turns out the static friction is more about the motion. Okay. okay. Secondly, don't combine forces. This looks to me like you combine gravity and kinetic friction. I think is how you have this 372. Oh, no, this is a little tough to follow your order. Um, and then down here, I had no idea where you got this negative 95 <coughs> um, So Anyway, take a look. If you need more help, let me know. Uh, yeah. So it's a little tedious, but the calculations are all the same. And once you find the pattern, it's great. Okay. Okay.
Ich habe eine Frage. Ich habe eine Frage. Ich habe eine Frage. Ich habe eine Frage. Ich I will, but you just you're gonna have to give me a few. Eva, Mimi, Ronnie's in the back. Wyatt just walked back in. Yep, Andrew, Abby. All right, man in the back. Do the same spreadsheet or do the same for Wyatt? Struggle to the target check. Are you good with it now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Give me a minute if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> and then for 
In the right direction. Yeah, I think that's correct. That's why the, why we need to practice things now, right? But it doesn't affect your grade. No, I know what you mean. If you're, yeah, if you're great conscious, it's like, ah, I'm failing. But I'd rather have you get a 9 out of 12 on this than a 45 out of 70 on the test. Do you know what I mean? Or 45 out of 60. I'm trying to do the same percent. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. 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 Watch out for this in the future. Cool. 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 Thanks, Cam. So we're all good? Okay. And again, if any of you are lying, you support help. I'm always around support everyone. Okay? Sorry? Yeah. Oh. I am terrible with figure Why you ask? So here's what I know. When you multiply, you keep the lowest number of significant figures. You add, it's the, yeah, the, the least precise decimal. That's all I know. But the wild thing is it depends on the order. Like, if you do it all at once and then use your rules, it's different than if you do it one step at a time and then use your rules, which is why I, I, I yeah. all physics teachers are just like, that. you know what I mean? After that, All right, uh, Willis, are you good with the mistakes you made on your target chart? I just wrote down the wrong number. I don't remember, but I, I know you have. Yeah, I remember that's not kind of like a like a game force. Right, okay, yes. Yeah. So, do you understand that? Because I wrote you a little note saying that it could be moved before I'm going to say your static phrase. You need to vote? Yeah. Thank you, Willis. All right, Lily. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, because like, when you think about like that, Oh wait, uh, uh the track is horizontal. Oh, okay. 
Do me a favor and make these accelerations positive. We're going to assume the direction that everyone's saying is positive. Oh, that's a really tough one. Go ahead. I 
Is this what the acceleration is supposed to be? No. Okay, where did you get my numbers wrong? Because that number is right. I checked out. Yeah. 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 Wait, why did wait? Why is there 46? Did you yeah. 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 I thought it was friction. I thought you said it was frictionless. No, there's no there's some there is friction. Uh, there is friction. That's what's yeah. there's a yeah. call fiction. Call fiction. Call friction. 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 That's my mistake. I didn't do a friction. That's my mistake. I didn't do a friction. I thought that's what friction was. He's like, I know. I thought you said. I thought you said. I know what the coefficient is. I thought you said. I know what the coefficient is. Uh, I'm still recording from last hour.